Welcome back. We still have with us Honorable Abdul Razak Namdas, who is the House Committee Chair on Media and Public Affairs. Now, we're talking about the suspension of Honorable Jibril, and we're asking, don't you think that 180 days is rather steep? Uh, I've answered you that, uh, in my opinion, it's not steep. Uh, uh, these, these things are not, punishments are not based on individual thinking. It's based on the rules and the code of conduct of the house. Do you have specific rules specifying, you know, how many days someone will go on suspension? Uh, when the suspension was handed, uh, a, a rules, the specific uh, rules and code of conduct was even uh, uh, was even mentioned. Uh, it was reported by you. I wouldn't say exactly which one now, but it was what was added. Would you say this is a case of scapegoatism? Because there are people who say that other members of the House have also raised this objection. I recall that, you know, here in our studios, we did interview one of your members oh. who talked about budget padding, that indeed it does exist, and that it had raised issue within the House, and that matter wasn't being, uh, you know, taken as seriously as they wanted it to be taken up. Why do, so, do, do those people who raised those issues, did they raise it, was there a petition in that respect? How do you mean a petition? What I mean is that you say some people raised the same issues, raised issues of budget. Yes. Yes, uh, those people didn't write any petition before the House for investigation. So if, there is no in, if there's no petition in the House of Representatives, which they say they have written and that they were assured by the, minister, by the Speaker oh. that these things were They've going to be... They've written a petition. Oh, yes. They oh. did claim that they, had written an investi that they had written a petition and that the Speaker did promise. In fact, they, according to them, they said it was before the Ramadan break and that they thought that when they returned from break, that was one of the things that they were going to be discussing, but that the matter never came up for discussion. Some members have actually taken up very serious issues in terms of the budgeting process itself, and they have gone on air not just you know uh, our station they've gone to other stations as well and even in the papers to complain about this budget padding and they're not being investigated they're not no, no, no one is complaining about them uh, thank god you said they claimed as far as i am concerned there is no petition for any other individual in the house in terms of allegation but for people speaking out i cannot say it, uh, people have not been speaking out but the thing is those who have been speaking uh, about the budget processes mm -hmm. uh, you can see when this thing was reported uh, when the question was put before the House, that those who are in favor to say yes, the entire House said yes. When they said those who are against it to say nay, there was no individual in that report. It's still here, it can be played. No one person said nay in that report. So in, to say, in, in terms of what, sir? The, when the question, at the time when the, the recommendations of the, the ethics committee was to be adopted by the entire house. No, I'm looking at the budgeting process yes. now. I mean, you have said that the house dealt fairly with the Honorable Gibran, but then uh, let's leave that on one side and look at some of the allegations that have come, not just against, not against the speaker, but in yes. terms of, you know, the budgeting process in general, which is where a lot of people think that the House of Representatives should be looking at. In fact, we've, did, we've heard that, you know, they, they say that the budgeting process does need reforms. Is that something that the House of Representatives is thinking of? No, I think in terms so reform. The speaker has said this repeatedly. There's a need for reform, and uh, reform can be can be made. That one is is everywhere. Nigeria is going through change. That does not mean that uh, it's also part of reform to make any changes. Uh, the thing I want to know: what are those specific things that people are talking about, so that I can address it here? What are those specific complaints that are talking about the process? What we have said, we have said it here, uh, uh, time without number, that the budgeting process is such that at the time Jibril uh, was when he was uh, the chair of appropriation. When this thing was concluded and was transmitted to the president, the president was on record that he would not sign that thing because first, the details were not sent on time, and secondly, when he saw those details, he said that uh, it was not fairly uh, done the way they wanted. And therefore, this same speaker that he, uh, Jibrin, is alleging, was the same speaker who said, look, Mr. President, return back this to the House so that we can look at the gray areas. And it was presided over by Jibrin himself. And that was why I said, if Jibril was also fair, at the time he was chairing the committee, and there were issues with the committee, when the president said, I won't do this, there are issues with this uh, budget, Jibril would have also stepped forward to say, look, this is, was the reason, this was the reason. Jibril didn't say that. Let's also go back to the fact that some people say, look, whether he said it after or before, it is the issue, we should not consider the time. Fine. But what we want to say is that at the time he didn't, a committee was set up to clean what Jibri, when, what, when he presided, didn't work well. And this committee was made up of the House of Representatives, the Senate, and in fact, the executive.
for the first time we evolved the executive so that we can be able to tidy down the budgeting process so the process was done and it was agreed at that level and the president went through the budget and signed it into signed it into uh, uh, into law and what we are saying is that we cannot get back into the same situation in 2017 we cannot get back so there's need for reform because this is on record, he didn't sign it, and this was the reason that well, was Honorable, raised. some of your colleagues have alleged that after the Committee of the Whole and the House of Representatives have passed the budget, yeah. or what they believe is the budget, that when uh, it's been transmitted to the presidency, in some instances, new line items are inserted into the budget before it is eventually given. And this is without the knowledge of the Committee of the Whole. You don't think that these allegations are quite grievous? This, this is part of, uh, sorry to say, it is part of the ignorance of, on the part of people who feel this is true. Let me give an instance here. On the part of other House members? Members who are making those statements. People who are making those statements. They're ignorant? Yes, or the issue. Let me clarify it here. I said, the one he is talking about, when this thing was transmitted to the president, and uh, the president said, I will not sign this into budget. Now into law, sorry. Therefore, this thing was returned back to the House. Mm -hmm. And when it was returned back to the House, a tripartite committee of three groups, one method of the House of Representatives, the Senate, and the executive. I want you to know that. If the House alone, even we pass, it can't be low until we get concurrence on the part of the Senate. And that was, that, what, that, that was what necessitated the two groups sitting together, including the executive. Now, these things, the three documents, the three institutions, people represented were there. Then they look at this thing together, item by item, together before they finalize that one. And 2016, I'm specific about it. When this thing was done and they agreed to it, Okay, in this ministry or in this agency, we have agreed to this, we have agreed to that. The executive is aware because they were representing the presidency at that time on that committee. So when they agreed and the president signed, those people who said, so other people came around to insert. Where did those people come around to insert? When it was because if they insert, it is not even the members that would be the whistleblowers. The executive that were on that committee would have even identified that something new was added. Uh, 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 to the line item. So it was not true. At the time that thing was cleaned up, every, it was signed into law, there was no insertion. So why would, who signed what? So you are saying that, you know, the budgeting process is fine the way it is and there, there is no need to change anything about how, no, when, how it is that we do the budget right now. What we are saying is that even if you do things rightly and there's a better way of doing it, you will still improve on it. There's nothing wrong if you do things rightly now and you want to improve on it. When you people are doing uh, Good Morning Nigeria or whatever you do, it was, three of you was doing it in, in, in Lagos. Later today you are now two are there and it's still going on fine. So if you are improving the system, better in budget, it is still okay. But what I'm saying is that we will need reform to improve the system. Honorable, the there are those of your colleagues who say that the sharing system, the sharing formula for the items that are supposed to be for uh, constituency, especially constituency project, that they, the formula is very unfair, it's lopsided towards the leadership. And they think that that should be rejected because you're all equal members, uh, you know, in the House of Representatives. Yes, they believe that the leadership should get a bit more, but not the human humongous amount that they get. I agree with you that it's not equal. And this is not as if it is done only in 2016. This has been the issue since 1999. And let me give you an example. What happens in the constituency projects is we have six zones. And each six zone is given a particular sum of money. Now, if you go to Lagos, the number of members of House of Representatives from Lagos, I think, is in the range of 40-something. If you come to my state, I come from Adama State, we are only eight. If you go to Gombe, there are only five. If you come to Kano, there are over 40. So it is natural. And we share it based on the number. So if, as a member, I'm not talking about leadership in this matter, and every member knows it, the man from Lagos will get probably 40 something million. I will get over 100 or something million worth of project, which is not money. You know, many projects equivalent to the amount. 